Hey there, welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph and I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. So tonight, or this afternoon I guess, we're doing a new album release. It's it's new in that it came out this year, but it's not, it's been about four months since it came out. Um, Primarily, the main reason why it's taken so long to do this is because I haven't had it, you know. I'm waiting for it to come in. It came in and I got it last time. I listened to it five times this week. Um, I think a pretty dollar for it, I think, too. Um, however, uh, I was a bit disappointed after the first couple of listens. I kept thinking, oh my God, I just blew my money for nothing, right? But it's grown on me. It has. It's taken a while. I've been, by the fourth and fifth listens, I actually don't mind the album. It's got some good stuff on it. So anyways, we're talking about this album here. If you can get a good shot of it, it's the Marillion new album. It's called An Hour After Dark. I like the cover quite a bit and actually the album has the same thing but it's black. It comes with a book which has this on the cover. If you notice, it's pretty uh, pretty interesting. I'm not really sure what that means. Maybe I'll figure it out at some point. Then you have this, which is the track listing, another page here. The uh, the work is nice. Like it's a it's a it's a beautifully well put together book here. It gets a hundred percent kudos for that. Anyway, I'll show you just about every page here. The lyrics are interesting as well. I'm gathering this is a concept album based on what I've read. Not sure what, exactly what the concept is, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And that's it for the book. So it comes with that book. It's a nice, like I said, it's black on the back and then this colored part on the front. So put it back in here so I don't lose it. Okay, so the album consists of. 18 tracks according to the uh, CD player according to Marillion it consists of seven tracks with some um, Roman numeral parts so but anyways before we get into that let's just do a little bit of what this album is about okay it was uh, the album's called an hour after dark after it's dark Sorry, an hour before it's dark. There, now we got it. Uh, March the 4th, 2022 was its release date. So that was a little over four months ago. Um, I've known about the album about three months. Um, I took a while to get it. The guy didn't have one. People bought up the copies and I waited and waited. Finally, he had a copy of it, so I bought it. It comes recommended by a couple of people from uh, the Sea of Tranquility. Well, they actually didn't recommend it to me directly, but they did uh, speak highly of it. Um, Stephen Reed and Eric Porter, both of them. So based on what they had to say about it, I decided to get it. Um, and uh, at first I thought I was making a big mistake here <laughs> but it's grown on me it has so anyways it was uh released march the 4th 2022 uh racket club in aylesbury buckingshire which is a stu the studio a uh, real world box in Wint wiltshire and ace art Solaria in belgium those are the three places i guess it was recorded um, it's about 54 minutes, which is 
not super long but I tend to be one of these people that I, I guess because I grew up when albums were 35 minutes to 40 minutes and that was a good size album and anything after that starts to lose me and so like all those albums over that um, it started to lose me <laughs> um, it was on intact uh, label uh, produced by Marillion and Michael Hunter okay so uh, Marillion for those of you who haven't been following them in recent years are the same they've been the same now since I think 89 I think 89 was when um, they had their last new member which was Steve Hogarth okay so Marillion are Steve Rothy and I forgot the last guy here how did they do that that's weird <laughs> I just noticed I only wrote down the four guys I didn't write down the fifth guy so I'm gonna need my book and glasses for that so I don't forget anybody here because I only have four names written there yet I know there's five guys yeah I forgot Ian okay we'll just remember Ian uh, anyways Steve Rothy, Rothy, who's the electric guitarist and the only original member in the band left. Uh, Mark Kelly, uh, keyboards, but he's been with the band for a long time as well. Pete Trevor, Trevius, also been a bass player, but also been in, with the band for a very lengthy time as well. Steve Hogarth replaced Fish and is the lead vocalist. Now, Fish has been gone for more than 30 years from the band so Hogarth has been there long a lot longer and then the last guy is Ian Morsley who I forgot to write down and he is the drummer okay pretty uh they're a pretty solid group of musicians I think um I remember when Mar Marillion came out end of the 70s frog music was Kaputsky at that point in time so I was already at the point where I had thought that by 79 I was just getting into some of these groups and then it was pointed out to me that prog music was dead and the stuff that I was going to get wasn't going to be prog anymore. So that was a bit disappointing but I did go back in the catalogs of a lot of the groups I like and enjoyed what prog music I could get. These guys came out and my first inclination about them was that they were cover band for Genesis. Although they didn't do any Genesis stuff, they were doing their own stuff. So after a while I began to separate the two and they have their own distinct sound now in my opinion. Um, so those 80s albums, Misplaced Childhood, The Script for a Jester's Tear, um, were albums I liked quite a bit. This album was nothing like that. They're very. This is a very different album from that and those albums. And I wasn't even sure this was the same band. I, I actually went back and made sure I had the right album. <laughs> but anyways, um, we will go through it a little bit, track by track, I guess, is the best way to put it. Uh, so it has basically seven tracks with multiple parts for many of the songs, like one, two, three, four of the songs have multiple parts. So the first one is probably my favorite track on this album, Be Hard On Yourself. Um, now the piano is a bit dominating on this song, I think. Um, it's a very clear sound. The whole album is very clear, I think. It's a well-produced album. Um, and the lyrics are, of course, very interesting on all eight of the tracks, seven of the tracks, seven of the tracks, all seven tracks, and all 18 tracks, really, but seven, seven parts. Okay, so um, some nice keyboards on this song. Uh, I like the, the guitar bits are good on this song too and of course I already said the lyrics are interesting um, the parts are the fear in the big picture uh, lust for luxury and you can learn ah all pretty good it's a pretty good song um, probably like I said my favorite track on this album 
So the next song up is uh, Reprogram the Gene. Hmm, interesting song. Again, the lyrics are interesting. Uh, it's a bit of a mellow song with some guitar distortion in it at, at points. Um, <laughs> it's funny, it's called, uh, the parts in it are Invisible, Trouble Free Life, and I can't even read what I wrote there. So rather than read what I wrote, I will find out what it says. I think I, when I wrote it, it was a bit of a quick write and I wouldn't expect anybody to read anything I wrote. <laughs> I can barely read it myself most days. And yet I try, but I'm just not that good at it, so. Oh yeah, a cure for us, that's what it's called. And if you read what I wrote, it does say a cure for us, it's just that I've mangled it up pretty good. Anyways, um, about this song, I don't, I didn't really like it. This was the part that I got to on the album that turned me off, you know. Uh, however, it grown a bit on me since then because I've read the lyrics and the lyrics are a bit of a story. To me, this is about, this is a millennial song. It seems to talk about millennials. It doesn't send, say that in the song, but just some of the things that people that age tend to bring up all the time. Um, as soon as I started listening to it and reading the lyrics, I, that's the first thing that came to mind. It's a pretty mellow song and it ends with a bit of a guitar store, distortion. Okay, the next song is Only A, which is just a short instrumental. I barely even know anything about it. I, it's, it went by so quick. Uh, machines or murder machines, if you prefer. Uh, keyboards and vocals are are uh, are good. Uh, the key, the guitar solo ha halfway through the song I think is really good as well, but the the lyrics are morbid. I found the lyrics a bit morbid and it kind of killed the song a bit for me. Um, then we get to uh, the number five, uh, crow with. The Crow and the Nightingale. It's a bit of a mellow song. Nothing, nothing special. Um, at this point in time, other than the first song, two through five, I found them uh, almost very similar. Like, kind of reminds me of that Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe album back in the '90s. Except for I like that album a lot. But a lot of the tracks, I can never quite remember what the title of this one or the title of that one is because they all sound kind of similar. I, I got the same feel from this. Um, the number six song, Sierra Leone, uh, Chance in the Making, uh, White Save Sun, it's White Sun, The Diamond, The Blue Warm Bit, and More Than a Treasure. Um, lots of keyboards on this song, very keyboard oriented song, I think. Um, it doesn't really stand out as being much different than the than its predecessors. Um, it's not a bad song though. It's it's. I think I like it better than the the uh, second through fifth tracks. Um, not a lot better, but I do like it better. It's the final track that kind of got me interested in in understanding what the hell was going on here. So the final track track is called Care, and on it it has maintenance drugs. Uh, an hour before it's dark, every cell and angels on earth. Uh, it's about four minutes long, um, the song, for these four parts. Um, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. And then there's this four minute where there's nothing. It's just dead. And you go, what the, what the hell's going on here? So for about four minutes. And then the last... Uh, what is it eight or nine minutes of the song is kind of a remix of the whole album like parts of the whole album it's kind of different um, so okay so that's a little bit of a blow by blow of the um, the tracks on it now my overall thing about it okay so what do I like I love I love the cover art I love the, the setup of the album 
I love, I love the whole package and the book, even the CD itself. So I like that part a lot. Um, the fact that it's Marillion is, you know, I'm, I'm happy that Marillion's still around playing like 40 years later. Uh, the tracks overall, uh, I like the first track quite a bit. And I like some of the guitar I hear on this album. Uh, the keyboards are pretty dominant on most of the album. Drums are pretty standard. There's nothing flashy here, but they're not bad. And, um, and of course, the lyrics are, are pretty interesting. And the uh, I, like I said, I think it's a whole story about living and dying. Like living your life, all the stuff that goes on in it, and then dying at the end. That that's that's a general feel about how I get, I feel about listening to the lyrics. So I like the lyrics; they're not bad. Um, okay, so what I don't like. Okay, there's a few things about I don't really care for on this album. It it sounds from track to track pretty pretty much the same songs. Um, when you first listen to it, and even now I've listened to it five times and I've begun to distinguish this song from that song and that, but it still sounds very similar on all the tracks. Um, there's this kind of mellow kind of droning that goes on through all five songs and the drums don't help it because they um, they keep a beat. So it's like it's like listening to a clock. It doesn't sound any different from the beginning, the first tick to the last tick, you know. That, that's my feeling about it. Um, I didn't like Steve Hogarth's vocals when I first listened to it. I warmed up a bit to it I, because I understand what he's saying now. I've read the lyrics and stuff, so I've gotten a little bit more in depth with his voice. So he's not terrible, but he isn't fish. I'm sorry. Uh, so I, I don't really care for the vocal performance. I just I just find his voice not that interesting. It's kind of it kind of suits this whole album, which is just it drones from the beginning to the end, and his voice does the same, and the drums do the same, and it just you know if I want to go to sleep, um, this album might not be such a bad choice. Uh, maybe that sounds a little bit harsh. Uh, it's probably a little bit harsh because I, I don't actually mind the album but those are the facts of the album as far as I'm concerned from my own listening uh, what else um, you know I, I had this impression from it when I first first couple times I listened to it that they were talking about love and stuff and I don't really care for love stories and stuff in my progressive rock music i mean there are exceptions but pretty much i don't care for that it's not that there's anything wrong with that from the beatles i love it from the stones i don't mind it either but from a progressive rock band i don't really care for that but after reading the lyrics and listening to it by the fifth time i began to realize they weren't talking about that they were just talking about the story of, that they were telling so i've since reprised that and say it's not that bad because of that so um, what else can I say about the overall picture? Yeah. Um, would I recommend buying this album? Uh, yes, I would recommend it, but not at the price I pay. <laughs> See, I pay 20 bucks for this album, and 21 with the tax rate. So when I pay $21 for an album, it's got to really be good. And this isn't this isn't worth the 20. I would pay maybe five or six dollars for this album and feel like it's it's a pretty good deal. You know? Because I've gotten, I've got albums up here that I paid a dollar for that uh, I would have easily paid 20 bucks for. And then there's albums up here on this chart that I paid almost 30 for and I don't like to see them on my thing because they remind me of how much I paid for them and how little I got in return. And it's unfortunate for the album because, you know, the one album I'm thinking of, and I'm not going to go into which one it is, um, I paid 30 bucks for it, and every time I see it, I remember that I paid 30 bucks for it, and it bothers me. But if I, if I paid what I think it's worth, which is 5 or $6, I would feel like I got a deal, and I would feel that it's, 
it's worth the six bucks that I paid for it. And that's pretty much the same way I feel about this album. It's worth about six or seven dollars. So if you can find this album and you like Marillion and you like progressive rock and you want something different and you can get it for six, five or six dollars, you'll feel okay about it. If you gotta pay 10 or 15 or 20 dollars like I paid for it, you're gonna feel you wished you didn't buy it, you know. And you know, up until today when I actually did this video, which I'm doing now, I was wanting to get it over with because I don't, because then it, I won't have to think about the money I paid for it. But to be honest with you, now that I've done this and I've gone through this five or six times, I don't mind it. So I will give it a fair shake and try to get the twenty dollars of my head. Because sometimes you win, sometimes you get great deals on solid stuff that you really like, and sometimes you don't. You know that's just part of it. And sometimes, um, you know, I guess I could have went online and listened to it first, but um, it was kind of a uh, you know I, I wanted to do something new. I wanted to give Marillion a chance, and uh, so I decided to do it. So would I do it again? Probably I would. Probably wait until the price came down a bit. That's the way I feel about it. But at any rate. Um, it'll go on my things here and I may listen to it again. I may not well, for a while. It's hard to say. I've got so much other stuff I got to listen to. And so, um, anyways, this is the release for this album today. A new release pending. Uh, had a review for it and hope, hopefully people will, you know, I, I would recommend that if you're, if you're kind of, like I was with Marillion, and I'm kind of on the shelf with them. I like their stuff, yes, but like I could have gotten, I was there the other day and I could have gotten a script for Jester's Tear, which I owned originally on vinyl. And then uh, when I gave all my albums away, I didn't have it and I've been wanting to get it back because I think it's a good album, but they wanted $17 for it. And I don't think it's worth quite that much. I'd be willing to pay maybe nine or 10 for it, but not that much. So, uh, Anyways, it is what it is. It's done. And I hope that, um, you know, give this a listen to. I, I would recommend that if you're kind of like me, you know, you like that Marillion from that period of time and you're not sure about this stuff, I would say listen to it online first before you go and put the cash out. Um, and then you might decide, you know, I, I don't really want it that bad. Anyways, that's it. I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe and I hope you have a good day. So there you have it. Frog Monster out.